everyone, this is Miss Barb from the Sterling Heights Library coming to you from home. We are a little bit open at the library right now in that you can go to the, you can get your items picked up at the curbside. We are having curbside library service right now. Uh, you can't come into the building yet, but you can put items on hold either by computer or you can call us up to put items on hold. We'll pull those items for you. When you come to the building, you'll call into the library. We'll check those items out and bring them out to curbside. So we're not quite open yet, although next week we will begin letting people in by appointment only to use computers, still not coming in to browse the book collection of the library, but we are doing everything in incremental stages. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, hopefully we'll be able to have people come back into the library building uh, to look for items. So let's just all cross our fingers. Uh, but we do have story time for you today. And the story I would like to read today is called Animals Should Definitely Not Wear Clothing. Uh, it's kind of a silly story. And to go along with the story, I thought we would do a couple of animal crafts. The first craft, we are going to make an elephant out of a paper plate. I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. And also, even though it's not really an animal, it's an insect, uh, I thought that you might be interested in making a spider craft out of a couple of cookies and some pretzel sticks. But before we do our crafts, we are going to start with our story. This is animals should definitely not wear clothing. Animals should definitely not wear clothing. Written by Judy Barrett. Animals should definitely not wear clothing. Because it would be disastrous for a porcupine. Look at all of his needles are coming out of the shirt. Because a camel might wear it in the wrong places. Look at his hats. Is that where hats are supposed to go? No, where do hats go? They should be on his head. Because a snake would lose it. Oh, look at that. What is it that he's wiggling out of? He's wiggling out of a pair of pants. Do snakes have legs to put in pants? No, they don't. That's silly. Because a mouse could get lost in it. What is this here? Is that a fancy hat? But I don't see the mouse. Do you see part of the mouse? I can only see a little mouse tail here. And I see teeny tiny little paws. But the rest of the mouse is stuck underneath the hat. Because a sheep might find it terribly hot. Oh, do sheep have do they sheep have a lot of wool on them? Are they all fluffy and full of wool? And if you put a sweater and a scarf and a hat on a sheep, do you think he'd be very warm? I think he would be very warm. Because it could be very messy for a pig. Look at that, he's wearing a shirt and a tie, but look at his tie. Is his tie in his food? His tie is in his food. That is very messy. And because it might make life hard for a hen. Look at the hen. Is the hen trying to lay an egg? The hen's trying to lay an egg, but where is the egg? Is it in the nest? No. Is it stuck in the in the hen's pants? It is stuck in the hen's pants. That will not work out at all. That's silly. Because a kangaroo would find it quite unnecessary. Here's the baby kangaroo in a pocket. Is that the pocket that the baby kangaroo is supposed to be in? No, should he be in his mama's pocket? He should be in his mama's pocket. And because a giraffe might look sort of silly. Oh, look at all those neckties that the giraffe is wearing. 
Does that look silly? That looks silly. It does not seem to be a good idea for animals to wear clothing. Let's see what else they do. <gasps> because a billy goat would eat it for lunch. <gasps> Is he eating his pants? He's eating his pants. He's going to eat all his clothes. Oh my goodness. And because it would always be wet on a walrus. Because does a walrus live in the water? Walruses are usually in the water, so his clothes would always be wet. And because a moose could never manage, uh-oh, he has suspenders. And are his suspenders stuck? His suspenders are stuck on his antlers. And because possums might wear it upside down by mistake. Because possums, they hang upside down by their tails. So their clothes are right side up, but the possums are upside down. So that is just silly. And most of all, because it might be very embarrassing. <gasps> Look at the elephant he has on a fancy green hat and flowers on a dress. And the lady is wearing a fancy green hat and she has flowers on her dress. Do you think that you would want to look like you were wearing the same clothes as an elephant? I wouldn't want to look like I'm wearing the same clothes as an elephant. So that could be very embarrassing. And that is the end of the story. Animals should definitely not wear clothing. I hope you enjoyed the story. Animals should definitely not wear clothing. I uh, kind of a fun, silly story. And as promised, we do have two crafts to show you today. So for the two crafts today, the first craft that we're going to do is make an elephant out of a paper plate. And I have a paper plate that I painted blue. You can, if you don't have paint at home, or if you have different colors, use a different color paint. Um, I've never seen a blue elephant, so uh, you can do yours purple, pink, green, red, black, uh, orange, whatever color that you feel is good for an elephant. Uh, I decided to go with blue. And you can either paint it, you can use crayons, you can use markers, whatever you'd like to do. So I already have my paint, my plate, painted so it's dry now for me to touch without getting glue all over my fingers. And very simple what we're going to do for this craft. We are going to, I'll actually kind of mark things out so that I can have my, um, have my craft a little bit even. I'm going to take a crayon and very lightly sketch for myself where I want to cut out for the ear shapes. So I think that I will have my ears on these two sides. So I'm going to very lightly sketch out with blue crayon. I'm going to put it's a little bit hard to see, but I've got lines right about here and right about here. I'm going to try and make the same lines on the opposite side. When I cut these out, then those, well I shouldn't say I cut them out, I will actually leave those in. Those are going to be the ears for my elephant. So I'm trying to make those, uh, trying to make them somewhat equal on the two sides. And where the plate curves in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this area here and this area here. I'm going to use that. Uh, that is going to become the trunk of the elephant. So I'm going to cut out here along the top and here along the bottom. You'll see how it looks. Got my scissors. Along. So I'm cutting it out on the very top. Cut off the very top, and now I'm going to cut along the very bottom. And hopefully, I have made my made my drawing fairly even, so that my elephant will have fairly even ears. He will not be crooked. 
So this is going to be my elephant's head and I've got an ear on either side. He kind of looks like, uh, right now he kind of looks like a piece of candy, uh, like a wrapper with the, uh, the little ends twisted up on the sides. But he is going to be an elephant. Those are his ears. Once I put the rest on, it's going to look more like an elephant. The next thing that I'm going to do right now is I have a pair of wiggle eyes right here. If you don't have wiggle eyes at home, then you can use a sheet of paper, cut out some round circles, and then just put some black crayon in the middle to make it look like eyes. I'm gonna put my eyes towards the top of the elephant. Like I said, this is a really simple craft to make. So, I'm gonna put some glue in two areas at the top and press on my two little eyes. So I've got two eyes for my elephant, fairly close together. I can do them a little further apart, it's up to you. And I'm going to take one of the pieces of paper plate and I'm going to simply glue that to the bottom and it's going to look as though he has a trunk coming out. So I'm gonna take my glue again, put some glue right there at the bottom of the plate and simply attach. And now I have my paper plate elephant. The second portion of the craft is to make the edible portion of the craft and I thought for an edible craft today because the book was all about different animals I thought we would actually do not an animal an insect I thought we would make a spider craft for the second edible portion and for the spider craft uh, what you'll need are two cookies I happen to have some leftover cookies from the last, last crafts that we did uh, some fudge stripes I have some pretzel sticks that they were actually regular sized pretzel sticks and I snapped four of them in half, so I have eight little half pretzel sticks, and I have a couple of M&Ms that are going to be my spider's eyes. So I'm going to take my frosting, which I kept it in the fridge because um, that's just a good storage spot for it, because it was left over for my last craft. I'm just gonna stir it for a few moments, that way it will warm up and it will be a little bit easier for me to spread. And once I have it a little bit warmed up, you can do this with other uh, types of cookies too. You could actually use an Oreo and it already has a filling. Uh, so when you put the pretzels in, it will already have something to hold on to. But I didn't have Oreos handy and I didn't want to run to the store and get some. So I'm going to take a little bit of frosting like this. Well, it's actually a bit of frosting. I'm going to spread that onto one of the cookies. I'm gonna try and avoid that center area as much as I can. If I get some in there, it's not a big deal, but uh, but I prefer not to really get a whole, whole lot in there. So once I have the cookie frosted, and I'm frosting the striped area because I want the chocolate parts to stand out, not the striped parts. Once I have that frosted, I'm going to put a couple of pretzel sticks in on the sides. So I'm gonna put four on each side. So I've got four over there, and four on the other side. And because the pretzel sticks are a little bit thick, I will probably put some more frosting on my other cookie so that I have a good sandwich of them. So let me set that down. A little extra frosting. So, a little bit more here. And again, trying to avoid that center. If some gets in, it's not the end of the world. on here. Yeah, a little bit of a messy and sticky craft, but that is what part of what makes it fun. So I will put these pieces together. So there I have got my spider and uh, the last pieces that I need are his eyes. Pardon me. Got cross the other fingers. So for the eyes, I'm going to take my M&Ms and just use a little bit of the frosting to glue them on. So I've got one eye here, and one eye here. If I had used chocolate frosting, it would be much less apparent, but I prefer not to get any extra sweets in my house if I can possibly avoid it. And so there are his two eyes and this is our edible spider craft. 
So we've got a uh, spider and we had our elephant craft. I hope that everyone enjoyed the crafts today. I hope that everyone enjoyed the story. And I hope that we will see you at the library picking up some books from our curbside hold pickup. And if not from our curbside hold pickup, then in a couple of weeks, people will be able to make appointments to come in to use computers at the library. That will be our next stage of, uh, of opening the building back up to the public. And hopefully soon after that, we'll get things back to normal and, and have people come into the library. Until then, I hope everyone has a great afternoon. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.